Tyson Fury just made it look easy against Dillian White and knocked him out within six rounds of an uppercut. This is the third time, third time that Dillian White's been iced by an uppercut. This is the fourth time he's been floored by an uppercut. As you can tell by my voice, I'm not particularly happy, but I'll go give credit where credit is due. Tyson Fury made it look easy. He beat Dillian White in better fashion than AJ and Povetkin did. You know, obviously White's a lot older here and he's had his wars in between, but still, I have to give Tyson Fury credit because in my prediction video, I did predict him to win with an uppercut as well. Um, I predicted eight round stoppage from an uppercut, but I have to give credit where credit is due because I predicted it'll be a tough fight for Tyson Fury. I was even thinking about the possibility that Dillian White could win the fight, but look at the fight, none of that was shown at all, at all, you know, Dillian White's never been beaten the way he has here, you know, apart from him getting knocked out by the uppercut, you know, but when he, when he lost to AJ, he gave AJ a tough fight, got in some very good body shots in there, her AJ, it was a very close fight up until the end, with Povetkin, he was winning that fight, winning almost every single round, floor Povetkin twice before he got eyes for the uppercut, here, The, the the biggest thing, yeah, was the foot speed. I mean, good Lord. Like, seriously, I always knew Fury had faster feet than Dillian White. And I always knew Dillian White had slow feet. But my goodness, like... And Dillian's balance, again, I always knew Dillian had bad balance. But it really showed because Dillian's balance, is so, Dillian's balance was so bad that he couldn't even put more than one punch at a time together. Often swinging himself off balance, leaving himself open. It was just... It was just crazy. Like, Fury made it look easy in there. I'll admit that. I still see this as a good wing for Tyson Fury. You know, we've got Vladimir Klitschko, Chisora, Wilder, and White. That's, the resume's piling up nicely here, you know. But hopefully, he doesn't end up retiring because he's still got plenty of things, to, like, people to beat, you know. Like, say, AJ, Usyk, Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker, a bunch of other people there, you know. But he just made it look easy. Dean White got some good body shots in there. He got some very good... Like, the only thing he did, he was able to maintain was the body shots. But other than that, he wasn't really able to do much. He didn't really hit Fury clean at all. To the head. Not at all. Like, Fury just beat him. That's it. I can't even say anything else. You can't even make excuses about it. You know, some people may say that, you know, he had to fight so long and so hard for his, long, for his world title. And he did. He did. He fought several years to get his title shot. Even had to take a loss in between. You know, had to go through several, you know, legal battles just to make sure that this fight could happen. And even then, to, in the build-up, he was still getting screwed financially. But the fact is, is he didn't turn up. Like, he got beat, you know. All these things happening behind the scenes and whatnot, but he still got beat. He lost. You know, I have to give Fury credit for that, you know. I'm not going to change my tune all of a sudden because, you know, Fury beat Whites and all of a sudden I've got to try and diminish the win. No. Facts is facts. Fury beat him. He made it he made it look easy. AJ Povetkin, you know, they have tough moments when it came to, you know, beating Dillian White, but Fury just beat him straight up. This is the third time he's been iced by an uppercut. I don't know what it is with Dillian White and uppercuts. Can you just not take that kind of shot? Like, he's just very susceptible to it. Like, and uppercuts aren't the easiest punches to defend. They're not really easy to defend at all. They're probably one of the hardest punches to defend, actually. But with Dillian White, it just seems any time he gets hit with an uppercut, he just can't take it. It's crazy. It is crazy. You know what I mean? And, you know, I think I said this in a previous video. I can't remember. But I do remember saying this for a while because there was a YouTuber that said the same thing. Hatman, um, you said that ever since the... The AJ fight, Dillian White's punch resistance isn't exactly being the same. Um, and for a while I was thinking, mm, I don't know if it's down to that. But after a while, I, I was thinking about it. This is before he fought Povetkin. I started to think about the first time. I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, he might be onto something. Because against AJ, who's a harder puncher than Fury, he was able to take lots of punishment. He took lots of punishment before he went down. It was a very grueling fight. But ever since then, you know, he's been hurt by... Chisora, if I remember right. He's been hurt by Hellenius. He's been uh, dropped by Joseph Parker. I won't put that down to punch resistance. I say that's more of a fatigue thing, but still, he got dropped in a fight. Um, he got... What was it? 
He got floored against Rivas. More of a balanced shot, but again, he went down from an uppercut. And he got hurt by Marius Wack as well in that fight. Uh, what was it from a right hand? And um, you got knocked out by Povetkin with the only clean punch Povetkin landed to the head in this fight. And here you go again. He got knocked out again by Tyson Fury by an uppercut. You know what I mean? And I remember talking about this in a video um, about Otto Wallen where he said that um, Gilly White's aging, he's been in a lot of wars. And I said, this guy might be onto something because Gilly White has been in a lot of wars. He's, you know, the war of AJ, the war of Chisora. Um, you know, got hurt by Hellenius, hurt by Marius Watt, dropped by Rivas, um, dropped by Parker, had a war with Parker as well. You know, um, the two fights with Chisora and, you know, we got knocked out by Povetkin. And he's had some injuries in between. He injured his shoulder in the AJ fight. He injured his hamstring. He actually had an injured hamstring going into the Povetkin rematch. And apparently in the Joe's Barker fight came with broken hands and broken ribs. So I said, you know what? Otto Walling could be onto something. You know what I mean? And it sounds like he most likely is onto something because look what happened here. It just it was just one-sided. You know, this is a good win for Fury. That I, that's all I can say. But after seeing White just getting flattened like that, where does he go from here? You know, at this point, I don't really know. He, he has taken a lot of punishment as a fighter. You know, you know what I mean? And taking punches and suffering knockouts like that, it's not going to be good for your health. I don't know where it goes from here. Like, I think, I don't want to say it's the end for him, but like, I don't really know. Like, I don't really know. I don't know if he can remain at contender level at this point because all the top level fighters are going to be thinking, oh, what I just got to do is land an uppercut on his chin and he'll be gone. And they'll be right. You know what? They'll be right. You know, all fighters going to be thinking from now on is like, oh, dealing with it could be out boxing me, could be hitting me, but all I have to do is just land this one uppercut underneath that chin and he's gone. And it's going to be true. Like, world level fighters are going to be exploiting this. Tyson Fury exploited it. Povetkin exploited it as well. You know, it's it's crazy. I predict my video that if Fury was to knock out White, it'll be from an uppercut because even if the uppercut isn't one of Fury's mo most known punches in the Otto Wallen fight, he was making good use of it. You know, um, yeah, the Otto Wallen fight has been good use of it. I don't know if I mentioned any other fights, but I know it's an Otto Wallen fight is making good use of it. So I thought against someone like Dillian White is going to be vulnerable to uppercuts. He's definitely going to use it against Dillian White. You know. <clears throat> and another thing in the first round, I don't understand why Dillian White came out southpaw. I didn't know what that really was about. I don't know why he came out southpaw. I never seen him do that before in a fight. I never seen him do it before in a fight. So I, I don't understand why he came out southpaw. I don't know what his plan that was for him to come out southpaw like that. And then in the second round, he eventually switched back to orthodox. I don't really know what that was about. I don't really know what that was about. That was that was really that was really confusing for me. But yeah, and. The thing that hurts me to say this as well is that Wilder did better than Dillian White in there. He, he did better. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, but Wilder's power and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I was saying to them, well, Dillian White's got better skills than Deontay Wilder. There's a lot more he can do to Tyson Fury than Deontay Wilder could. He's, he's, a, he's a better skilled fighter than Deontay Wilder. But that still didn't stop White from getting blown out the way he did. You know, at least Wilder was able to drop Fury, you know. But... At least Wilder was able to drop Fury and hurt him, but White didn't really do much in it. And it kind of pains me to admit this, that Wilder did better than White did in this fight at all. Otto Wallen did better in this fight against Tyson Fury than Dylan White did here. Like, it pains me to say this, but it's true. You know, facts are facts. You can't deny the facts. You know, Fury made it look easy in there. And I always thought since 2018 that this was going to be a tough fight for Fury. You know, I always thought Fury would win. Always thought it'll be a tough fight for Fury, and there's a possibility Dillian White will win. I always thought this fight is a 60 40 in Tyson Fury's favor. But here, it looked like a fucking 80 20, 90, 90 10. That's what it looked like in there. You know, so it just kind of pains me as a Dillian White fan to say this, but, you know, it, Fury got the job done in style, you know, and a lot of his fanboys were predicting this will happen. And, to say, and it, again, it annoys me to say this, but they were right, you know. I've never been so pissed off about getting a prediction wrong, um, a prediction right, because I predicted Fury would beat uh, White with an uppercut, you know, but as a White fan, as I wanted White to win, you know, it didn't happen, you know, 
as far as White winning, it didn't happen. Fury got the win. In styles, I predicted, you know, the only thing I didn't get right in terms of my prediction is that it was a tough fight. It wasn't a tough fight at all, you know. So, <clears throat> what's next for Fury? Well, there's Alexander Usyk there. Usyk's going to have the rematch with AJ. So, he should fight the winner of that. There's se several other contenders out there like Parker and Joyce. Apparently, their fight's been confirmed now. Apparently, there's minor issues that are just getting away with it. That should be announced soon. There's Philip Hergovic out there, Michael Hunter, Andy Ruiz. There's 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 a, a lot of contenders out there. And another reason why I want White to win this fight is because, is because look look how pe look how crazy people are already going. Saying, Oh, see, Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight of all time, no one can be and blah blah blah. And anyone that thinks that Tyson, anyone can match Tyson Fury, uh is you know, is blinded by nostalgia. Or just I'm like a oh, Hold the fucking horses. This is the reason why I wanted Dylan White to win the fight. It's because people like that just make me like... It just... People like that just make you like go mad. Like, seriously. Like, the guy hasn't fought everyone in his era yet. Like, honestly, saying that this guy's the GOAT heavyweight. No, he's not the GOAT heavyweight at all. He's not. He's not. Is he a good fighter? Yes. He's a very good fighter. He made easy work at Dylan when everyone was going life and death with him. You know? So he does have the potential to be the greatest fighter of his generation if he beats them. But at the same time, don't go around using this opportunity to say, oh, he's the greatest fighter of all time. He's better than Lennox Lewis. No, he fucking isn't. Lennox Lewis was undisputed. You know, saying he's better than the likes of Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis. You know, <laughs> come on, people. Larry Holmes. Like, what's wrong with you people? What is wrong with you people? No, he's not the greatest fighter of all time. He's not in the top 10 at all. Let the guy do his thing. Stop putting his name next to these fighters out there. Let the guy do his thing. He's already given himself a nice resume here. He's got a win over Vladimir Klitschko. He's got a win over Wilder. And before people get twisted, I've never ever said that Wilder was a shit fighter. I've criticised him. as I've spoken about his flaws, how he's got shit footwork. He's one-dimensional. He can't find the inside at all. He's a one-trick pony. But I've never, ever once said that Wada is a shit win. I've always said Wada is a good win. I just didn't rate as highly as other people did. Because people seem to think Wada is better than he actually is. Right? And he's got Jazora. And now he's got Dillian White. That's a nice resume to be had there. Vladimir Klitschko reigning for all these years as champion. Good. Wada, he was a long-reigning champion. Uh, Ten out of title defences against shit opponents for the most part only had really one good win against Luis Ortiz who for the most part is unproven but still a good win nonetheless considering what Fury had to go through and such and the fact that Wilder was still a champion at the end of the day Chisora as well that's a good win considering what Chisora has gone on to do since even though Chisora was green at the time Fury was actually expected to lose that fight and Dillian White who I rate highly you know as a contender he beat the likes of Joseph Parker uh, Derek Chisora himself gave Andy Joshua a tough fight, you know, um, gave Pavekin a tough fight before again, not tight and beating Pavekin in a rematch, you know. That's a nice resume for Fury, but to go ahead and use that and say that he's the greatest fighter of all time, this, this is the reason why I wanted him to lose because of people like that. You know, you don't have to overrate the guy. This like this is the problem. He's a good fighter. He's a good fight. He's undefeated, 32 0 and 1. He's got a nice, himself a nice resume. I will pick him to be Anthony Joshua. And I will certainly pick him to be Alexander Usyk. But he's got to beat those men first. But before then, just quiet down the talk of him being the greatest fighter ever. And such. Because Fury's talking about retiring as well before the fight. And I, I don't believe he's going to retire. I don't believe he's going to retire. But let's just say he does, right? For him to leave with Vlad, Wilder, Chisora and White. Right, on his resume. Good wins on his resume, but at the same time, if you're comparing it to the all-time greats like Muhammad Ali, you beat people like Joel Frazier, um, people like Joel Frazier, Ken Norton, George Foreman, uh, Lennox Lewis, he beat Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, um, Razor Rod, Tommy Morrison, uh, Joel Lewis, he beat the likes of Max Schmeling, uh, beat the likes of, um, what's the guy's name? Um, I can't think of it right now, right now at the moment, to be, to be honest with you. Uh, James J. Braddock, he beat him as well. Beat Max Bear. Th those are the guys I was thinking of. Um, to compare him to Larry Holmes, you know, don't compare him to those people, please. Don't compare him to those people, please, because 
unlike Tyson Fury, for, for the most part, with the exception of Larry Holmes, those guys that are listed, Ali, Lewis, Tyson, and Joe Lewis, all of them man were undisputed. Tyson fought everyone else that was put in front of him. So did Lennox Lewis. Ali as well. So did Ali too. Larry Holmes, for the most part, did it as well. Although there was a couple of people you, you could say he didn't fight in his era. You know, but most the reason why is because a lot of them lost before, you know, Larry Holmes could have fought them. But facts is that he didn't fight them. But don't compare him to the heavyweight greats. Please, not yet. Don't do that. But yeah, it's a good win from Fury. He made White look bad in there. He really did. And I, it's sad to say it, but the Fury fanboys were right in this one. They were right. Fury made it look easy and he knocked White the fuck out. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't, like, I, I can't go against that. I can't make excuses or anything like that, you know. I said it was going to be a tough fight. It wasn't, you know. There you go. You could say why had all this time he's battling legal case and all that. And it did take a toll on him mentally. But at the same time, he still signed a fight and he still went ahead with it. And he's got to take the the, the consequences that come with that, i.e. getting knocked out and such, you know. But... Yeah, you got to give Tyson Fury his credit. I don't want to see anyone trying to... Anyone that's picking Dillian White to win all of a sudden trying to diminish Fury's win. No, 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 no. This is a good win for Tyson Fury. A good win. A very good win for Tyson Fury. Um, And I I, I think Fury is going to beat these other guys, you know. um, I still think Usyk was still giving problems. I think Usyk was still giving problems. AJ, well, AJ can still give him a few problems here and there, but AJ's got to sort out his rematch with Usyk first. And, you know, make some major improvements to show that, you know, he can still hang at least at the, the highest of, you know, at world level, you know, with the elite level. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And then there's some people that are also saying that, oh, see, if it wasn't for free, why would clean out all these heavyweights? That is, again, not true. <laughs> that is not true. Same thing with people saying that why isn't a good fight at all and, you know, free not to much. Okay, cool. If that's the case, I don't want to see anyone put Dillian White on Fury's resume now that Fury's beat him. Don't put Dillian White on Fury's resume now that Fury's beat him. Because a lot of people were shitting on Dillian White before the fight and saying it was going to be easy, which it was, in all fairness. But if you're going to shit on him, don't all of a sudden put him as a good win on Fury's resume because all of a sudden that just makes it look worse now. Because I see a lot of fans do this. Errol Spence fans do this a lot. They, they shit on a fire before a fight. They say... Uh, Spence is going to do this and do that. And then when Spence beats him, they expect all the credit in the world that Spence beat this guy, despite the fact that they trashed on the opponent beforehand. It's crazy. You know what I mean? So what my point was as well is that people were saying that, you know, Wilder, if it weren't for Fury, that Wilder will clean out all these heavyweights. Again, that is not true because Wilder didn't fight most of these heavyweights. You guys are dealing with hypotheticals. No one watches boxing to deal with hypotheticals. No one does that. This is why we all watch this fight, to see who would win. And now we can shut all that down of Dillian White not getting a title shot. We can't complain about that anymore because he got his title shot. And he didn't look good doing it and he got he got knocked out. No Dillian White fan can complain about him not getting his title shot anymore. You know, he got it and it is what it is. He lost, you know. We can't complain that Tyson Fury don't want to fight him because Tyson Fury, he done it and he made it look easy. He made it look easier than anyone else has done it. You know, we can't complain about that, you know, but with Wilder, like Wilder for years didn't want to fight Dillian White. It's weird. I don't know why he didn't want to fight Dillian White because Dillian White is a vulnerable fighter. I've always been saying he's a vulnerable fighter. You know, all these guys are vulnerable, but White's a vulnerable fighter and Wilder for some reason didn't have the, the balls to get in there with him because it's not like Wilder couldn't win the fight. He could, you know, it's based on that fight. Whoever lands first. That's what White Wilder is. And for some reason, Wilder didn't have the confidence to do it. And the fact that Fury made it look so flipping easy in there and Wilder didn't take the fight, it just makes it look even worse on him that Fury has to go up and clean Wilder's mess. And this is the first time that Wilder had to... Uh, sorry. This is the first time that Fury had to go and fight someone that Wilder didn't. Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko when he had no title on the line whatsoever. He was a pro less longer and he had less fights on him. Fury went in there and fought Vladimir Klitschko and beat him. Wilder didn't want to go in there and fight Klitschko. Wilder, you know, you know, Wilder's manager was saying, oh, well, we're not going to put him with Klitschko. He's a baby. Even though he had 33, what, 33 professional fights and already had a piece of the world title and you weren't ready to fight a unified heavyweight champion for Undisputed. 
So this isn't the first time that Fury had to go in there and beat someone that Wilder wasn't willing to face, you know? And if Fury does go in there with Usyk or Anthony Joshua and beats them, it'll be another time that uh, Fury has gone in there and taken care of Wilder's mess, you know? So no one tell, tell me that, oh, Wilder will clean out all these heavyweights if it weren't for Fury because Wilder won't even get in there with heavy uh, the other heavyweights. He didn't want to get in there with AJ. They didn't want to get in there with Dillian White. And it looks worse now that Wilder didn't want to get in there with Dillian White. Because this is the second time since, you know, Wilder, White has been call, calling out Wilder that White's been iced by the same flipping punch. This is the second time. This is the second time, you know. And it just makes it look worse than Wilder that he didn't want to fight Dillian White. There's receipts out there that he didn't want to fight him, you know. And see, Wilder didn't want to fight AJ, didn't want to fight Usyk, didn't want to fight Parker, you know. Didn't want to fight any of those guys. Didn't even fight Charles Martin for unification. There's so many guys that Wilder didn't want to fight and he didn't take it. So no one told me that he's he could clean out all these, all these heavyweights and blah, blah, blah if he went for Tyson Fury because he didn't fight any of them. He didn't want to fight any of them. So there must be a reason why he didn't want to get in the room with any of them. No one's cleaning out all these heavyweights. That's what I'm saying. Fury could well lose. Even, even after this fight, he could still lose. You know, but I still favor him to be all the other heavyweights out there because he's a very good fight. He's a very good fight. He has all the he has all the skills, you know. His feints and his feints was really making Dillian White, you know, a little, you know, jittery in there. You know, he would faint, he'd do a certain feint, and then Dillian White would bring his arms up so high that would leave his body exposed. You know? Top a couple of times, Dillian White left himself open for uppercut three, tried it, but it just missed the mark just about. And then eventually he got the shot in there, you know. fru has got the skills, he's got the, you know, he's got the toughness in terms of recovery, he's got the heart. He's got a lot of things in there. He can get a bit dirty in there, he's got inside fighting skills in there. Not as good, you know, his inside fighting isn't as good as people make it out to be. But his inside fighting is alright, you know, with his size, with his big size, he can just lean on heavyweights, you know, maul on them and do that and that. And when they get tired, he takes them out. He's got the skills. He's got everything. He's got almost everything to, you know, be what he needs to be. But before you start calling him an all-time great and such, he's got to go out there and do it. And, you know, looking at his resume, it's slowly piling up to be a good resume. Hopefully this continues. Because I, I liked what I saw from Fury. Even though I didn't want him to win the fight. I don't like Tyson Fury. I don't like his fans. But truth is, as a boxing fan, as an objective boxer fan, you got to like what you see. Otherwise, if you don't, you're just a fucking fanboy. You know? People call me a white fanboy, but if I was, I'd be making excuses. But Fury just looked good in there. He looked very good in there. That's facts, you know. And I've been calling this fight for four years. I've always wanted to see the fight, you know. Yes, I always wanted to deal to win, but I wanted to see the fight because I love boxing. I want to see the best fight the best. I don't care how it goes. I just want to see the best fight the best. You know, if I was a fanboy of a certain fighter, I wouldn't want to see certain fights because I'd be afraid that my fight was losing. I'm not into that bullshit. I see boxing to see good fights. And if that means um, a fighter of mine that I like, that I'm a fan of, gets knocked out, then so fucking be it. Because I'm a boxing fan first, a fan of a fighter second. That's how it is. And if you're not that way, then you really shouldn't be watching a sport, in my opinion. You know? But huge credit for Tyson Fury. Made it look easy. Um, the Fury fan for Nikes were right. He did make it look easy. And that's the truth. You know, and hopefully Tyson Fury continues to fight. You know, before the fight, I was like, ah, if he retires, ah, fuck it. You know, but I like to see him fight a bit more. But if he does retire, then I can't really put his name in name up there with you know all the other guys. You know, but yeah, Dean White did try to get aggressive in there, but he he just weren't good enough. He weren't good enough. You know, his footwork was just all over the place. It, it, it was all over the place and it's an issue that he's had for years now. It's something he can never, he's never been able to correct because of his kickboxing background. That's why his feet are like that. In kickboxing, his footwork will be all right. But in boxing, that kind of footwork is horrible. That kind of footwork is horrible. And every time, you know, he got hit, he will go off balance completely. And that's why he wasn't able to throw more than one punch at a time because his feet weren't aligned correctly in order for him to mount, uh, you know, a decent offense without throwing himself off balance and leaving himself open, you know. So, Fru took advantage of that, as he should, and he got the win over a world-level fighter, you know. Some people say, why it's not that guy. I, I think he's still 
a good guy like, in terms of fighting. World level guys meet some decent people. Don't let this fight, you know, fool you different. It's just that like Fury's a different level. And Fury might be a different level over all these other guys, you know, but we still have to see it but instead of just, you know, dealing in hypotheticals and say, oh, because I think this person beats that person and that means he must be blah, blah, blah. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I still like to see more from Fury, but it's looking nice. So congrats to Tyson Fury. He retains his title for the second time. <laughs> I remember there was a time when <laughs> I was making fun of him for having those uh, title defenses, but he's got two title defenses now. So, you know, hopefully he challenges the winner of AJ Usu. Can we get that fun disputed? It'll be a great fight. Congrats to Fury. Dillian, hopefully he can come back from this. I was going to say keep your head up, but that's not a good thing to say for a boxer that just got knocked out. So, yeah, hopefully Dylan can come back from this, you know. Um, God, I'm trying to find a good way to say it by sounding <laughs> uh, comical. Um, but, yeah, just keep your spirits up. Hopefully come back from this. Hopefully you don't let this get to you because I, I still like to see him in some fights, Dylan White. He's in entertaining fights all the time, win, lose or draw. Always in an entertaining fight, but hopefully this isn't the end of him, Dean White. But going forward, fighters are just going to be seeing that as a flaw. All they're going to do, like a lot of fighters will be lazy as well. Coming in, there's like, ah, fuck it, he can do whatever he wants. All I'm going to do is just land that one punch and he's done, you know. And for the most part, they're going to be right, you know. So, yeah, Tyson Fury wins. It's a great win for Tyson Fury. Now, let's see him do what you know, the greats have done, then we can start putting his name in there with, with him. I have no problem putting his name in there with him, but only when, you know, it makes sense. But Tyson Fury proved me wrong. This wasn't a tough fight at all. He made it look easy, you know, and I'm starting to rate him as a, you know, as a better fighter now, you know, now that he's been able to do this to his opponents. So, yeah. Anyways, it's the first amount.